This video is the final video in the series of videos about Excel 2013 Unit B in which we're going to be rounding a value with a function. Now the more you explore features and tools in Excel, the more ways you'll find to simplify your work and convey information more efficiently. For example, cells containing financial data are often easier to read if they contain fewer decimal places than those that appear by default. Now you can round a value or formula results to a specific number of decimal places by using the round function. And we're going to do that at this time. If we take a look on step uh, 1 and on page Excel 40, it tells us that we want to click on cell B14. So we're going to go to this 20% rise. Once we do that, it tells us that we want to click just to the right of the equal sign in the formula bar. So we've typed in our formula here for this 20% rise. However, we can also add a function in as, uh, to this as well. To do this, we're going to go ahead and just start typing round. So we're going to type in R, O, and of course then we see that here's our different options. And to do this, we're just going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and just finish typing this out to where it says round, and open up our parentheses. Now once we have this, yeah, of course, you can also double click as well uh, once you see the word round appears on there. And of course, that's step three. Uh, the new function and an operating uh, opening parenthesis is added to the formula. So it should say round and opening parenthesis. Now, a few additional modifications are needed to complete your edit of the formula. You need to indicate the number of decimal places to which the function should round numbers. You also need to add a closing parenthesis around the set of arguments after the round function. So when you're editing this, unlike in previous times when we were typing in functions, you actually need to go ahead and close out the parentheses on this one. So once we're here and we have round and open parenthesis, we need to press our end key to go to the end of this. Then next, we're going to type in comma zero. So you press N, your N key to go to the very end of the formula, and then comma zero and close your parentheses. Once you have that, just go ahead and click on your enter button and then take a look at your result. The comma separates the argument within the formula. So the number doesn't really change, just the number of decimal places. So it's now rounded it to where there are no decimal places in this formula. And that's why we put the zero there. The comma zero indicates that we don't want any decimal places to appear in the calculated value. Now when you complete the edit, the parentheses at, the, at either end of the formula briefly become bold, indicating that the formula has the correct number of open and closed parentheses and is balanced. So notice that it's not bold now, but when we were typing it, it was there. Now of course, uh, the insert function uh, dialog box uh, of course, the round is there, and if you're looking for that, if you're looking for that in the insert function dialog box, that's in the math and trig category. Now, if you do have problems doing this, you may have too many or too few parentheses. Now, the uh, parentheses is displayed, uh, if you have any erroneous or extra uh, parentheses, they're going to be in red, or a warning box will open up with suggested solutions to the errors. So if you have any problems with that, you only need two parentheses, so you need to have equals, round, open parenthesis, then the formula, comma, zero, and close parenthesis. That's all you need to have in this uh, cell right here. And so what you've just done is you've used the round feature to round this number to where it's an even amount. So there's no sense that is there. Uh, it's just round to the nearest dollar, if you want to put it that way. Once we have this here, we can actually click and drag our fill handle from cell B14 all the way to cell E14 and that will copy that formula over there and that way saw so all the values are rounded to display no decimal places uh, on there. Go ahead and take a few moments to compare um, your work that's here um, to what you um, have on your screen. Now a little bit of a hint or tip which I know sometimes the um, 
Uh, they'll probably mention this in a different section and everything. And uh, generally when I do grade uh, these uh, assignments, you may have the correct numbers on here, but I'll tell you how I truly grade these papers and everything. Uh, I grade your files, but when I grade your files, I hit a keystroke. I you typically hit the control and the key directly to the number one, uh, to the left of the number one. Uh, and when I do that, this is what I typically look and this is what I grade. Uh, because you may have the numbers that's on here. And of course, if you'd say, hey, well, my numbers are correct, that's what it shows in the textbook. However, I'm looking to make sure that you have all the formulas, all the functions, all correct uh, that's on there. Because it's real kind of easy to trick somebody uh, on there if you just type in the numbers, but I'm looking for these formulas and functions. Now, if you ever want to go back and forth between these different views, just hit your control key and the key directly to the number left of the number one on your keyboard at the same time, and you'll notice that this change will be there. So, uh, if you want to spend some time, take a look at this screen right here. You can pause the video. I'll leave this down on here for right now for just to uh, you know, pause the video right here, and you can take a look and make sure that your screen looks like this. Now it, the column width will expand and it will contract depending on what view you're looking at. This is the formula view and this is the important view. This is what I'm looking at. You know, I'm not, I don't care that you have you know, 38,824.63 in the total. I'm looking for sum of B4 to B11 uh, on there. I don't care if you have you know, 41,790 in the 20% rise. I'm looking for this round of B12 plus B12 times point, uh, 0.2 comma 0 and the parentheses and everything. This is what I'm looking for. You know, I'm not looking for purely this. I'm looking for this information. So this kind of gives you a little bit of hints and tips on what I'm looking for. So once again, pause this right here. Take a look. Make sure that your worksheet looks exactly like this. Okay, the last little thing is on um, step six. It tells us that we want to scroll down till we see row 25. It tells you to click on cell A25 and go ahead and type your name in on cell A25. And you can click on your enter key there. And uh, just make sure that you uh, double check your work, make sure everything is proper, and, and that you do go ahead and save your work as well. And then, of course, go ahead and upload this file into Course Sites. Uh, for the Excel B walkthrough. Uh, of course, also do take a look on page Excel 41 where it talks about creating a new workbook using a template uh, on there. Using templates are very similar to Word. And Excel templates are just pre-designed workbook files intended to save you time uh, when you create common documents such as balance sheets, budgets, or time cards. Templates contain labels, values, formulas, and formatting. So all you've done or all you have to do is to customize them with all your information. Excel comes with many templates and all you uh, and you can create also create your own or find additional templates on the web. Unlike a typical workbook which has the file extension of .xlsx, a template has the extension of .xltx and that just tells you that it's a template. To create a workbook using a template you click on the file tab then you click on the new on the navigation bar and of course I'm just going to save my work and I'll show you this real quick. If I click on file and then new and then of course I can search for my templates here or I can choose some of the different templates down here uh, on there and this is on the backstage view. Uh, of course the blank workbook templates what we have been working with mostly that's on there but you can have different templates that's on there and that you can work with. And of course, to select a template, say for example, we want to select that one. We can select that. It gives us an image here that we can take a look at. And then we can just click on Create. And of course, it will download it uh, if it has to. Uh, and then it will open it up. And there's what it looks like. And then of course, then we can make our changes. And then we can save that as well. And of course, that's just using workbook templates. Well, that concludes this series of videos for Excel B, and uh, you're ready to move on to the assignments uh, now, so make sure that you check course sites and you are ready to move on.